Christmas. Welcome to online worship. I'm Reverend Beth Hoskins. I'm the minister at Inman Presbyterian Church, as well as Landrum Presbyterian Church in the upstate of South Carolina. Welcome to this special edition online worship prepared for us by Foothills Presbytery. I can't wait. This was pre-recorded. I'm worshiping uh, and celebrating with my family, just like you are. Uh, but I did want to lift up the prayer concerns for the church folk that might be watching. In Landrum, I would add two people to this list. This is an old list. I want to add Rick D., who was in the hospital with heart trouble and is at home, but please pray for Rick. I also want to add Jan P. Um, please pray for her. She's still getting over uh, kidney stones, and JC is still trying to get his strength back from cataract surgery. In Inman, uh, pray for these folks. Tom G. is in hospice care, um, and pray for the others as well. Can't wait to see you next week. Without further ado, let us worship the Lord together. Call to worship and prayer of adoration. Please join the call in the call to worship as written on the screen. Let us go in heart and mind to see what has come to pass. Let us go with the shepherds. Let us go find the Savior. Let us go with the wise ones. Let us go to find God's promise born for us. Let us go with the poor and the humble. Let us go find our King born in a lowly manger. Let us go with all the world, with all the people of the nations. Let us go and join the heavenly chorus. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. Exalted God, even as the heavenly host sang of your glory in the night skies over Bethlehem, even as the stars shone in the heavens, and sheep and cattle gathered in that light, so we gather in worship to recount all that you have done for us in mercy and steadfast love. Nothing can destroy the dreams and visions you have placed within us, for you have drawn us close. With all creation, we praise and exalt your name forever and ever. Amen.
Hear these words from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. Like a great light in the land of deep darkness, the mercy of the Lord shines on us. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins using the words of the prayer of confession written on your screen. God of grace and truth, in Jesus you have came among us as light shining in the darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed that light or trusted the good news to be good. We have closed our eyes in the glory of midst, expecting little and hoping for less. Forgive our doubt and renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace. Then open our lips that we may sing your praise with the angels and remake our lives that we may witness your transforming love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hope is in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. there are things that are very old yet also new. Families take their child to be dedicated or blessed at a church or synagogue. This has been going on a very long time and still goes on today. Ask your parent about your baptism. When Jesus was eight years old, Mary and Joseph took him to a temple in Jerusalem. In those days, the oldest son in the family was dedicated to the God in the temple. Simon lived in Jerusalem. He studied God's word. Simon wanted so much to be to see the promised one from God before he died. The Holy Spirit told him, Simon, you will only get get to see you will get to see the one from God before you die. On the same day that Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple, the Holy Spirit urged Simon to go to the temple. Simon spotted a baby Jesus. He knew this what this baby was the one from God, Israel's new leader. Simon want, went to Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. He was so excited. He took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, I have seen the one who, from God who will be the light for all people. Mary and Joseph were surprised by Simon's words. Simon handed Jesus back to Mary. He said, This baby will save Israel, but not all the people want peace. Since you love Jesus, you, it will hurt you when they don't listen to him. The prophet Anna was also in the room. She was very old, and she lived in the temple. That She prayed there day and night. Just when Simon gave Jesus to Mary, Anna praised God and told everyone about or there about this special baby. If there were other people in the temple that day, who do you what do you think they saw? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for all the ways you love us. 
Thank you for calling us your children. Help us to share your love with others. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, by the light of your word and the breath of your spirit, bring us the good news of great joy for all, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Savior, Messiah, and Lord. Amen. Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings the good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns, listen, your sentinels lift up their voices together, they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion, break forth together into singing, your ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem, the Lord has bared his holy arms before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Respect for the mystery. The lack of mystery in our modern life is our downfall and our poverty. A human life is worth as much as the respect it holds for the mystery. We retain the child in us to, ex to the extent that we honor the mystery. Therefore, children have open, wide awake eyes because they know that they are surrounded by the mystery. They are not yet finished with this world. They still don't know how to struggle along and avoid the mystery, as we do. We destroy the mystery because we sense that, the, that here we reach the boundary of our being, because we want to be Lord over everything and have it at all, it at all, all disposal. And it's just what we cannot do with the mystery. Living without mystery means knowing nothing of the mystery of our own life. Nothing of the mystery of another person. Nothing of the mystery of the world. It means passing over our hidden qualities and those of others in the, and the world. It means remaining on the surface, taking the world seriously only to it, the extent that it can be calculated and exploited, and not going beyond the word of calculation and exploitation. Living without mystery means not seeing the crucial processes of life at all and even denying them. Ascension joy. Inwardly, we must become very quiet to hear the soft sound of this phrase at all. Joy lives in its quietness and incomprehensibility. This joy is in fact incomprehensible, for the comprehensible never makes for joy.
Peter chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little, while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. We cannot approach the manger of the Christ child in the same way we approach the cradle of another child. Rather, when we go to his manger, something happens, and we cannot leave it again unless we have been judged or redeemed. Here we must either collapse or know the mercy of God directed towards us. What does that mean? Isn't all of this just a way of speaking? Isn't it just pastoral exaggeration of a pretty and pious legend? What does it mean that such things are said about the Christ child? Those who want to take it as a way of speaking will do so and continue to celebrate Advent and Christmas as before with pagan indifference. For us, it is not just a way of speaking. For that's just it. It is God himself the Lord and creator of things, who is so small here, who is hidden in the corner, who enters into the plainness of the world, who meets us in the helplessness and defenselessness of a child, and who wants to be with us. And he does not do this out of playfulness or sport because we find it so touching, but in order to show us where he is and who he is, and in order from this place to judge and devalue and dethrone all human ambition. The throne of God in the world is not on human thrones, but in human depths, in the manger. Standing around his throne, there is no flattering vassals, but dark, unknown, questionable figures who cannot get their fill of this miracle and want to live entirely by the mercy of God. Joy to the world. Anyone for whom this sound is foreign or who hears it in nothing but weak enthusiasm has not really yet heard the gospel. For the sake of humankind, Jesus Christ became a human being in the stable of Bethlehem. Rejoice, O Christendom. For sinners, Jesus Christ became a companion of tax collectors and prostitutes. Rejoice, O Christendom! For the condemned, Jesus Christ was condemned to the cross of Golgotha. Rejoice, O Christendom! For all of us, Jesus Christ was resurrected to life. Rejoice, O Christendom! All over the world today, people are asking, Where is the path to joy? The Church of Christ answers loudly, Jesus is our joy. Joy to the world. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as 
people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders. The rod of their oppressor you have broken as the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. For this time onwards and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Everlasting Father, how can this be the name of the child? Only because in this child, the everlasting fatherly love of God is revealed, and the child wants nothing other than to bring to the earth the love of the Father. So this son is one with the Father, and whoever sees the son sees the Father. This child wants nothing for himself. He is no prodigy in the human sense, but an obedient child of his heavenly Father. Born in time, he brings eternity with him to earth. As Son of God, he brings to us all the love of the Father in heaven. Go, seek, and find in the manger the heavenly Father, who here has also become your dear Father. Prince of Peace, where God comes in love to human beings and unites them, their peace is made between God and humankind and among people. Are you afraid of God's wrath? Then go to the child in the manger and receive the peace of God. Have you fallen into strife and hatred with your sister or brother? Come and see how God, out of pure love, has become our brother and wants to reconcile us with each other. In the world, power reigns. The child is the Prince of Peace. Where he is, peace reigns. In our lives, we don't speak readily of victory. It is too big a word for us. We have suffered too many defeats in our lives. Victory has been thwarted again and again by too many weak hours, too many gross sins. But it isn't true that the spirit within us yearns for this word and the final victory over the sin and anxious fear of death in our lives. And now, God's word also says nothing to us about our victory. It doesn't promise us that we will be victorious over sin and death from now on. Rather, it says with all its might that someone has won this victory and that this person, if we have him as Lord, will also win that victory over us. It is not we who are victorious, but Jesus. <laughs>
Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, and so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. On the weak shoulders of a child, author authority rests upon his shoulders. Authority over the world is supposed to lie on the weak shoulders of this newborn child. One thing we know, these shoulders will come to carry the entire burden of the world. With the cross, all the sin and distress of this world will be loaded on these shoulders. But authority consists in the fact that the bearer does not collapse under the burden, but carries it to the end. The authority that lies on the shoulders of a child in the manger consists in the patient bearing of people and their guilt. This bearing, however, begins in the manger. It begins where the eternal wor word of God assumes and bears human flesh. The authority over all the world has its beginning in the very lowness and weakness of the child. He accepts and carries the humble, the lowly, and sinners, but he rejects and brings nothing to the proud, the haughty, and the righteous. righteous. From the Christian point of view, there is no special problem about Christmas in a prison cell. For many people in this building, it will probably, probably be a more sincere and genuine occasion than in places where nothing but the name is kept. The misery, suffering, poverty, loneliness, helplessness, and guilt mean something quite different in the eyes of God from what they mean in the judgment of man, that God will approach where men turn away, that Christ was born in a stable because there was no room for him in the inn. These are things that a prisoner can understand better than other people. For him, they really are glad tidings. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the begin beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all may believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world.
He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. God became a child. Mighty God is the name of this child. The child in the manger is none other than God himself. Nothing greater can be said. God became a child. And the Jesus child Mary lives lives the almighty God. Wait a minute. Don't speak. Stop thinking. Stand still before this statement. God became a child. Here he is, a poor like us, miserable and helpless like us, a person of flesh and blood like us, our brother. And yet he is God. He is might. Where is the divinity? Where is the might of this child? In the divine love in which he became like us. His poverty in the manger is his might. In the might of, of love, he overcomes the chism between God and humankind. He overcomes sin and death. He forgives sin and awakens from the dead. Kneel down before the miserable manger, before the child of poor people, and repeat in faith the stammering words of the prophet, Mighty God, and he will be your God and your might. But now it is true. Christmas will come again. The great transformation will once again happen. God would have it so. Out of the waiting, hoping, longing world, a world will come in which a world will come in which promise is given. All crying will be stilled, no tears shall flow, no lonely sorrow shall afflict us any more. Christmas. Let us join our voices together in the litany for Christmas as seen on your screen. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all. Glory to God in the highest. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Glory to God in the highest. For a child has been born for us, a son has been given to us. Glory to God in the highest. He is wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, Prince of Peace, glory to God in the highest. To us is born in the city of David, a Savior, a Messiah, a Lord. 
Glory to God in the highest. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. Glory to God in the highest. Christ is born. Give him glory. Christ has come down from heaven. Receive him. Christ is now on earth. Exalt him. O earth, sing to the Lord. O you nations, praise him in joy, for he has been glorified. Amen. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray for the life of the world. When I say, O Christ, our light, please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray together. We pray for the church. With Mary, help us treasure and ponder the gift that has been given to us, a gift of good news and great joy for all. O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. With the prophets, help us proclaim the promise of your peace for all nations and your justice for all people. Our light, our Christ, O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities. With the shepherds, help us to keep watch over those entrusted to our care and all who need protection this day. O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for, the, for loved ones. With the angels, help us to offer signs of hope, comfort, and joy for all who live in fear. O Christ, our light, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, hope of the world, help us to bear witness to your light so that we may believe and have life in you. In your holy name, we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, by the, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From the fullness of God, we have received grace upon grace. With grateful hearts, let us, let us offer our gifts and our lives to the Lord.
Let us pray. In this gifting season, O God, we are grateful for the gift of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Receive, we pray, all offering we bring. May thy be used in the service of your grace and truth dwelling among us. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Rise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Go and bear witness to the light of Christ. For all, the, for all that God can do with us, for all that God can do without us, thanks be to God. For all in whom Christ lived before us, and for all in whom Christ lived beside us, thanks be to God. For all spirit want to bring us, for all where the spirit wants to send us, thanks be to God. Listen. Christ has promised to be with us in the world as in our worship. Amen. Amen. 